Appeals. Uh, the first item on the agenda is an appeal but of an order by the zoning enforcement official by John Tinkle for the property located at 33 Times Road in Essex. And that 45 left one. I don't want to start this. So. Well, I'm here for um, uh, Mr. Tinkle Day for the record. My name is Terry Lum. I'm here for Mr. Tinkle Day representing in this matter. Um, First of all, uh, you may recall that last month I asked that this be continued so that uh, we could get our survey. I have spoken to Mr. Hendricks, who's the surveyor, uh, several times. He assured me that I would have the survey by tonight. I don't have it. I uh, left messages with his office on Friday. I left uh, a message yesterday. I left a message today trying to find out what the story was. Uh, and again, uh, he assured me on Friday uh, that I would have it for tonight. Uh, I think that a survey is, is relatively critical because it will tell us where the properties are located and uh, exactly what is, um, if anything, is too close to the boundary. Um, Mr. Boudreau has some photos, I have some photos, all of which I think are, are fairly similar to the uh, um, showing the, the, the property. Um, and I think probably most of the commission members are uh, familiar uh, with this property. Uh, it's located at uh, 33 Plains Road, and I'm going to submit these two. Uh, that one is the 2000, I have other copies, 2012 aerial, and this is the 2010 aerial. Um, I believe the issue. One of, the, one of the major issues is the uh, house with the carport. Uh, it is our position that this house, um, well reconstructed, uh, existed, and you can see it in the 2010 um, aerials, and uh, that it existed in a slightly different state, but you can also see that there is a um, I'm not exactly sure whether it's a trailer, but it's a structure that was uh, right close to the boundary line. Um, and so now the um, uh, alleged defending carport is uh, actually a little further from the boundary line. Um, there are structures all around uh, the other house and um, shown also similarly in the uh, 2012 um, area. As this board is well aware, 8-13A uh, uh, indicates that if a structure has existed for three years uh, and there's been no zoning enforcement, then it is considered non-conforming. It's our position that these structures have, list have existed for more than three years. Um, and not only that, but they have been used over a substantial period of time for residential uh, uses. The, the house that's next to the carport, uh, I believe is the one that, that uh, Mr. Boudreau was indicating, uh, didn't have a prior use. It has a septic system. Uh, it had been used for housing um, for several years before Mr. Mr. Finkel Bay uh, <coughs> the property. Um, in addition, I have um, two, uh, actually, let me submit that as a copy of the statute, A-13A, and I have um, two other documents that I'd like to submit. Um, one is a letter from um, Carol Spear, who is the former uh, sanitarian here in town, dated July 15, 2002. Um, and she is responding to the state uh, environmental engineering section of the uh, DEP. And um, in her letter, she goes through some of the, um, there was an issue with a separate tank before Mr. Uh, Mr. Finkelday purchased this property from his father. But one of her concluding statements is, the property has been used for a variety of residential and industrial uses over the past 50 years. And there are several separate systems in Wells and with and without town hall documentation on the property. Mr. Finkelday has provided documentation on the location of the systems to this office. 
So it's clear that in 2002, there were residential uses, several residential uses, as she says, and um, several septics and septic systems and wells on the property. So that's from Carol Spear. And then I also have a building permit from 1994 for a single family dwelling, which was before uh, Mr. Finkelday's house was built. And Mr. Finkelday's house is the house that's right in the center in both of those pictures. Um, I'm sorry, 1994 is after Mr. Finkelday's house was built. And so um, uh, goes to additional uh, dwelling spaces. Terry, could, could I interrupt sure. you for just a second? Could you like, step back and give us a, I don't think we're completely, at least I'm not. What, what building is being well, out of what, Okay, there's the, that, give, us, give us a framework here. Okay. For the, for the, tell, tell us the forest okay. before we start talking about yeah. the trees. That's, that's the sine qua non of this discussion, I think. Um, Mr. Finkelday owns this property, 33 Point Road, which hasn't changed in its configuration during any of this time. There are um, three major structures on this property, several minor sheds and, and things like that. The, 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 the house that's in the center, that's where Mr. Finkelday and his family live. Sorry, could you just be Yeah, that this, is, this is the house you're Yep, to. exactly. Okay. okay. Then there is, this is a, a, a rental house that's a tenant. And then in, in this building, which is this building, there is a commercial, um, I believe it's B and K, uh, landscaping is downstairs, and then there's a tenant upstairs. So those are the general the uses. Res residential tenant? Yes, yeah, residential tenant, upstairs. Um, so those are the general uses of the property. Unfortunately, um, the cease and desist simply says that there's an unimproved use of existing, and, I'm sorry, an improved use and existence of a structure as a dwelling unit along with an accessory structure. The use of all accessory structures without zoning permits and within setback areas. So those are the violations. Mr. Boudreau then goes on in this uh, cease and desist order, which I think you have a copy of, um, indicates that there have been uh, two notices of violation, um, and it has been determined that the use of the building as a dwelling has never been approved. But nowhere in here does he describe what buildings he's talking about. Clearly, Mr. Finkelday has lived in his house for years. His um, father rented um, the, what I'm going to call the small house, the, the other house, um, out for a significant period of time. And there's always been a tenant in the, uh, in where the commercial building is, and then an, an apartment upstairs. So my point is that this isn't clear. I, I really don't have a, a good way to respond to all of this. Um, I would like to do that, but I don't have a good way. So what I, I suggest is that perhaps Mr. Boudreau present his evidence or case or whatever he wants to do with uh, Attorney Sipples to you. I think we still have one continuation left. Continue it one more. We just opened the hearing last month, right? So we're 30 days into it. Right. So we could have another 35 days. Continue it. Let me respond appropriately. I'll have the survey at that point, and then let's see, let's see where we are. But I have to tell you that I'm, a, I'm at a little bit of a loss to determine exactly what, what this cease and desist order is talking about specifically. Now, he does mention carport. So that part I get, that that's what he's talking about, is, the, is this car for That's this. That's this. Is this yeah. building here? Right, right. Do you, that's which building here? That's here. This is the car yes. Yeah. So that I understand. But as you can see in this picture... This is just cleared land here? Yeah, that's dirt. So this was put on uh, without a permit? It, uh, that's, that's Mr. Boudreau's position. We do not have a building permit for that. And this building looks significantly bigger than that, or is it just from that function of scale? Uh, no, it's been it's been altered to combine sort of all of those structures. Whether the total so how old is this uh, <coughs> this addition right here that we're talking about? It, it, it's over three years. Is, is our point? But it was done without a permit. It was done without a permit. How but old is older than three years? I'm going to say well, it's it's. Um, 
It's not in the 2010. So, so it's four years old. Right. Well, but that doesn't mean that it could have been done in 2012. Right. right. I mean, if it's not on 2010, what's the other date? I'm sorry. There's a 2012 area. 2012. Right. So we don't know if that was done in 2010, 2011, early 2012, or. Mr. It, it, it's unfortunately Mr. Finkelday is out of the country. It's Mr. Finkelday's uh, statements to me that it was done in 2011. <clears throat> so it's more than three years. But um, well, when in 2011? Yeah, because it's three years. Was it done before June? Before the date of the cease and desist in 2011? Oh, yeah. yeah. And What's the date of the cease and desist? No, no. The cease and desist is dated 2014, right. January 2014. Yeah. So they did it in 2011. I mean, I, I well, mean, no, it's not 11, my strong point. 12, 13. You're counting. If it's January 2011, it'd be 2012, right. 2013, 2014. January, that's three yeah. years. Yeah. Oh, no. But we can count. If it's done in 11, if it's done um, in the beginning of 11, you can count 11, you can count 12, and you can count 13. Correct? Well, it depends on what date. Well, that's what I'm saying. But I said if it's done in the beginning. And, and I was well, well, that's true. That makes me 56 <laughs> instead of 57, I guess. <laughs> okay. now, wait a minute. I like that. We're, we're going to be on this. If he built it in 2011, in the beginning, let's say he built it in January. Right. Yeah. No, I get okay. It. To January 2012. 12. Right. To January 13. Right. I still have two fingers. Well, and, and but you're not going to count 13. You count and get, that. Right. To January of 14. Right. Okay. But it's still only two years. If no, no, it's no, three years. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you said, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be the horse. You, you said that it was done during 2011. Early my, 2011. My point is it would have had to have been done before January whatever of 2011 right. to be more than three years from the date the cease and desist. I, I don't disagree Okay, with okay, good, good, good. But you didn't want to count any of 2011. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was my concern. Okay. So one of the things we need to know is the date there. Absolutely. Yeah, right. we need so it would some, be nice if you would. It would be nice if we had some sworn testimony on that. Right. So that's what I intend to do is to come back with either affidavits or people and swear them in and have them testify to you. But I don't want to. I don't want to waste a lot of time going back and forth tonight because I can't provide that information for you. So I suggest perhaps um, we have uh, uh, Mr. Boudreau proceed with what he'd like to proceed with, and then I again would just renew my request to continue this um, until the July hearing, and then we can proceed at that point. And either I have the information or I don't, and uh, you'll have to. Decided. Why was this flagged? I mean, somebody going. I don't know. Somebody, the the know somebody complained. Mr. <coughs> Boudreau probably has the answer to that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Is it time for? I think so. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless there's questions that I can. Uh, there are specific questions based on, on what I was just saying. That, that I, can I think we've been pretty clear. I mean, generally, we need the date of when you believe it was yep. built. That would be important, and obviously the map that you're trying to. Carry some extrinsic. Validation of the date. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I, I have one question. Yeah. Um, with regard to the, the I'll call it the commercial structure with yeah. the residence above it. Yeah. You're saying that that's been a residence for years. For years. The the, the apartment. The apartment right. is upstairs. Right. Is there any question about whether or not there were building permits for these structures or? I don't think so. I mean, I don't. I I, I don't think that that's an issue. I mean, we'll let Mr. Boudreau proceed okay. with what he has to say, but that's not according to this, according to the uh, cease and desist and something. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything further for me? No. Not right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Peter Sipples. I'm an attorney with the Essex Zoning Commission. I have an office in Clinton. I represent Joe Boudreau, who's defending this appeal. Uh, procedurally, I have a memorandum, Joe's ready to go forward tonight. Uh, typically you have the person taking the appeal, making the presentation, and then we respond to it. Uh, depending on whether you think it's going to be cooler in July or cooler tonight, <laughs> or hot tonight uh, we'll go, we go either way to make our presentation now or wait till next month. I, I'd like to hear your side of the story now, I guess, because uh, it's pretty confusing to just... Yeah, I think we can clarify it a little bit. I have memorandums after Joe presents his information. I'll give you a memorandum, which I think is fairly clear. Okay, okay thank you. Chris, Barbara, you're the last member to get your regulation. So, here you thank are. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
this is the official record, so I'm going to have these entered into the record. I have a series of exhibits I'll be singularly putting into the record, but I did make copies for all of you with regards to photos and aerial photos, and I will refer to them. clearer, I hope, when I'm done. And no matter how many times today I practice this, it won't come out as practiced. So I started working here in November of 2011. And shortly thereafter, I started putting together a business log because I knew it would be important for me to know where all businesses were in town. So in case one moved and another one came in without a zoning permit, I could allude to it and say, no, you need a zoning permit. And having done that, I knew that this property at 33 Plains Road had a single family dwelling and an accessory building with, I believe, commercial offices, as told to me by John Finkel Day years ago, for his septic service and a landscaper, and up above, some apartments. So maybe the letter that was referred to before by Ms. Spear saying there are apartments there and septic systems probably alluded to the single family house and that building tying into some septics. Don't know for sure. It's a letter that's now on, on record. Uh, so I knew the property was commercial and residential. The town knew it. No issues. One day, Around June 12th of 2013, an officer came to me and said, Joe, did you know John Finkelday built a house on his lot? I said, no, I didn't. And I didn't approve a house on his lot. But I already knew there was a house there, and I knew there was the other building. So I had to go see what he was referring to, because he said there was a, another house on the lot. So I went down there, took two pictures. You see them uh, as the first page. One, The top one is... Angled left, it looks like a house. And then the other one is straight ahead, it's a cardboard. Now, before I go running off and say that's a violation, I had to see if there were permits and on record. And that same day, I ascertained there was no zoning approvals, no health approvals, there were no building permits. So clearly, we have a second house on a single property with another house. You're talking about this one? Right here. Yes. So you're uh, saying, okay, there was no, so that answers one of the questions. The next was, page, yep. That answers one of the questions just asked earlier. Do we know if there was a permit on these? And what you're saying is no, there was not. Correct. I'm going to refer to that aerial in a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, so I had to ascertain if there was permitting. There, was, there wasn't any. I wrote a letter to Mr. Finkelday, a request for a meeting here with the health department and the building official to talk about it. And he attended. So the first record item I'm going to submit is a copy of my desk calendar. It's a miniature that says on July 24th, 2013, the meeting was scheduled. And he did attend with an associate. Don't know who the guy was. He kind of wanted to, I won't say what he said, but Mr. Finkelday confronted us. We told him there's no permitting for anything regarding this house and this Carport, and if you look at the second page, the 2012 aerial, it's circled. That's the uh, little complex we're talking about. Um, and he said, you know, someone's always lived there. In fact, when I bought the property in 94, it was a shed, and somebody lived in it. All I did was I expanded the shed. Never denied it was a house. He never denied someone lives there. His only comment about permitting was, the official, the building official at the time, Dick Layton, said it was okay. No permitting. Nothing with Dick Layton's name except for like a mechanical or an electrical. And we can't even tie that to where that was for. So during my investigation, I wanted to see, okay, is what I just took a picture of something that's been there for years? So if you look at the aerials, You'll see a 2004 aerial with the circle on it, and you'll see what the area looked like in 2004. And it looks like a garage, a couple accessory buildings, 
and something up along the, the property line. I'm not sure what that is. If you look at 2008, it's a circle again. Something's missing. And what we see is a garage and an accessory building. And I'll explain in a minute why I'm calling it a garage. And then we see 2012. So clearly, something's changing. Now, yes, there's a gap between 2008 and 2012. I have no idea when the construction was done. John said to me it was kind of recent. Recent to him could have been two years ago, could have been one year ago, could have been three. But I don't think it, I can't even say it happened during my time here. This is a cluster of buildings so hidden you can't see it from anywhere, any street, any neighboring property. So that's the aerial map history, and those are the pictures I'm going to submit. Also, I think the last page are two other pictures. One's a shed. You see a truck near it. That's the southwest corner. That looks like a new shed, probably commercial related. And then if you look at this one, I believe there's an accessory building right here. That's on the northeast corner. I think that was relocated from the circled area years ago. I think that was once in the circle. Oh, Joey. Mm -hmm. When was this picture, these pictures taken? Uh, they're, they're time stamped. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. so I'll enter them into the record. Um, also, I ask you a question? Just for clarification. Mm -hmm. when, when you first started, you said it was in 11? November of 2011. Did, did you visit this property? Uh, when I put my business log together, I had to drive in just to see it. Right. And I didn't even look over there. I mean, it, there's like trees. I had no reason to look over I, there. I see the trees on the... Mm -hmm. So I can't even say I knew there was something there. I was only looking at the house and the garage over here. Yeah. So another piece of investigation was after maybe... Oh, and at, at the meeting with Mr. Finkel Day in this room, he gave me a letter from a past resident who said he lived there. I'm going to submit that. Oh, I'll submit that into the record if I find it. But he gave me a letter from somebody who said they lived there for three years before they moved to another building on the property. But it doesn't say where he moved from and where he moved to. So he had, a, he had something. From that meeting, I said, you know, I'll do more research just to make sure the town didn't know that this was a residence. Because maybe I could give you that and you just get your permits for the expansion. Okay. Um, went to the assessor's records of today. And here's what the town knows is there today. Um, they know that the garage with the departments over it are there. I have no issues with that. The town knows about it. This is his single family dwelling. That's where Mr. Finkel Day lives. So the assessor knows it's there. And the, now I'm hoping to find a house with the carport. It's not there. But there is another reference to an outbuilding, a garage, 392 square feet, called FGR1 Code. Okay, this is getting interesting. Okay, that's in the record. Here's something we have in the file. It's a very old survey. Um, I dated 94, and I can't remember where I got that date, although it's not on here. It could be tied to another item in the, fold, in the files, but I'll show you real quick. In the area where you saw the circles, it says FRGAR, Frame Garage. So you don't see a house there or a carport. <laughs> just says frame the garage although there is a well and a septic or a, a vault concrete vault next to it I don't know why so referring to the previous document the, the tax assessor's record mm -hmm. does, does that indicate that that building or that house is not being taxed <coughs> correct okay. when is the last time that the town of Essex did a physical revout last year okay and so last year, they did a physical revamp. I mean, they went out and visited every property. Yes. yes. Yep. And it doesn't show up? I, last, be I last talked to Jessica before they went head wall into the revamp. I haven't spoken to her about this in the last six months. 
Okay, no, well, I'm, I'm asking the question is this is, the last, the last reevaluation in Essex was what, October 1, 2013? I would think yes. Or October 1, 2012. Well, 13. 13. So that means that work would have been done in the, in the summer of 2013. If it's a Correct. physical revamp. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm asking you these questions because these are answers you want to find out so you, we, we get specific, perhaps even a letter from the assessor. If the assessor says that it was a physical revamp, meaning that they went to every property in Essex, they knocked on every door, whether they got in or not, they went all around, and in the summer of 2013, if October 1st, 2013 was the last physical revamp, and they didn't find a house there in the summer of 2013, that's fairly significant evidence. Correct. All right, so I'll see what her records show today. And I think you ought to, I mean, your counsel advised you, but I think you ought to get something in writing. Whether it was a physical reval, you know, what, I mean, if it was just a numbers reval, they wouldn't have gone to every property. This was a physical knock on the door, can we come in? Okay, well, with commercial, I mean, I, I think you ought to pursue that. Okay, I will do that. Now I'll just submit for the record my correspondence, my request for meeting, and my notice of violation letters. There was at least four or five that led up to the cease and desist, which you've seen. Here's the letter from that resident who said he lived there. Um, and here's the cease and desist. Does that resident still live there? He said he lived there up until 2010. Mike, can I ask a question? I haven't looked at that statute in a long time, but my recollection is that it applies to setback violations, but not to use. Well, uh, I didn't bring my statue with me, but Terry's provided it. Can you handle that so we can? It's on top of the I believe Peter will submit it too with his memo. Okay. It, it, but I would agree with you. It, it goes to coverage and setbacks, and not necessarily to use. Okay. It is because I don't think it works. And the last two things I'll submit are the limited industrial district regulations of today and 1973. Uh, most of this lot is in the limited industrial district. The Finkel Day house is in the district. This contested house is. And the regulations state that single family dwellings are not allowed in the limited industrial district at all. So the one we know of is valid non-conforming. The other one would never have been approved, even if they came in for permits. So I'll submit those two things. Uh, Bill, you said two of the property. Is the third property is in a legal zone? Did I understand you to say that? No. No. Okay. No, nope. it's the one property. It's got a district line through it. One side is limited industrial with two homes. The other side's not in. Okay. There's nothing on it. Does the three-year statute of limitation apply to usage? No. Yeah applies to the location of a building as it regards things like setback, minimum coverage, that sort of thing. But not to use. Because it's a structure oriented statute. It's where there's an enforcement about the location of the structure. So there's no statute of limitation on, on the use being not allowed. Uh, the statute of limitation, you mean for bringing an enforcement action? Yeah. No, not strictly. I mean, you know, if you waited it's 40 just, years and brought one, the court might say you waited too long. No, I'm just asking, I'm just asking that yeah. in relation to the setbacks. If, if Terry comes back next month and, and says that he's got over three years, so the setbacks are... Uh, mm -hmm. Then we go on to the next question. Which is yeah, the just, that's what I'm saying. Is the use mm -hmm. have that same limitation or mm -hmm. is that... No, no. does not have that limitation. So, so it's been mentioned that I was not clear, I, did, I was not specific with what I was referring to with regards to the cease and desist. I'm here to tell you that the request for a meeting letter clearly states there were violations of explicit sections of our regulations. In the meeting here, we were explicit. Mr. Finkelday, we're talking about this building right here and this carport. So he knew what we were referring to, and it led up to the cease and desist, so when he got it, no matter how I wrote it, he knew it was for that building, and that carport, and those sheds. How big is this residence? 
I see the side. I've never been in it. I've only taken those two pictures and I saw the aerials. That's all I needed. Do you have an estimate of its stock? No. No. Okay. Right. I don't want you to guess. So I have 11 sections that were violated. I could rattle them off as if you want, but I was specific. Uh, and I can't remember what the other two things were. But I think one was related to it being a dwelling for a long time. And the other was buildings are protected by law. So they have to prove when did they build it, when did he expand it, when did the carport show up, and no permit proves when that happened. So I'd like to, I'd be interested in when they can get proof of that. So that was my investigation. I think I was right in issuing the system to assist. Do you have any questions? I would just repeat that you need to follow up on the assessors because if it was a physical inspection and if the, they have a record that the, uh, the town appraised, hired appraiser went to the property, visited the property, saw everything that was there, and the date that he did that, they would have all that in their records. That's going to be evidence. I'm not going to say it's the only evidence, but it's evidence. Mm -hmm. of what was seen by someone on a particular date working for the town of, <coughs> of Essex. I'm surprised that when I printed out the assessor information, which may have been a month ago, that it wasn't changed. So I'll, so they do hand notes when they visit, so maybe there'll be some notes that says, not done door, no answer, and or they were ordered to leave. I'll look for that. No, but the significant thing is you're telling us that the assessor's records do not show this house at all. Correct. As a if if it's a what I'm what I, I'm assuming that's correct and assuming that they can say that on July first, twenty thirteen, Joe Joe Smo went to the property, visited the property, photographed the buildings on the property, you know, checked it, measured it, whatever, and left, and Joe Smo didn't notice this carport or this house sitting there. That's evidence. I'm not saying it's the only evidence or it's conclusive evidence, but it's certainly evidence of what he saw on that date and time. So that's what you need to uh, arrive I'll and, and... I'll talk to them this week. Yeah. yeah. So that's so, my... So I guess, do you want to continue this? Can I, can I just yeah. show that most of this, and I'm, I'll be speaking next month, I'm sure, but uh, he was going to deal with the factual matters, I was going to deal with the legal matters, he dealt with both of them, so I don't know. Stage will look out the door this time. <laughs> this is the uh, memorandum that I've mentioned before. And that's the original one here, copies for everyone. And a couple things to point out. First of all, if you look at the final page, you have the two statutes that I've referred to in the memo, and one of them is this 8-13A. And as Attorney Wells said, he's, he's correct. When a building is so low, situated on a lot that it violates its only regulation of, of the municipality, which prescribes the location of such a building in relation to the boundaries of the lot, what we mean setback, or when a building is situated on a lot that violates its only regulation of, of a municipality, which prescribes the minimum area of the lot, so if you build on a lot that's too small, and when such a building has been situated for three years without the institution, of an action to enforce such regulation, such building shall be deemed a non-conforming building in relation to such boundaries with the area of such law as the case may be. So as Ernie Wells mentioned, the setbacks, the area of the lot, and he also said that the use is not included here. That as you had asked, the use could exist for 30 or 40 years and it's not. Uh, it, it's either a non-conforming use or it's an illegal use. I hope that clarifies that a little bit. On the front page, uh, it's just to mention the fact that I think Mr. Finkelday has had a great advantage here. He's had two single-family homes, none of which are allowed in the industrial zone. He's had this other, other various other structures, plus an office, plus a rental above the office. If he were starting from scratch today and none of these preceded zoning, and it's questionable as to which ones did, he'd be allowed one single-family dwelling and maybe a, a uh, garage, and that would be all he'd be allowed. You have one use and that's all. Uh, the property is in an industrial zone, single family dwellings are not allowed at all in an industrial zone. So the, the residence that he has is non conforming, assuming it was built before the regulations went into effect. I think the last thing that Joe gave you, one of the last things, was a zoning regulation from 1973. So we went back at least that far 
and industrial zone did not allow single family dwellings even in 1973 or any time thereafter. And it makes sense that you don't want manufacturing next to a house if you can help with an incompatible use. So what would Mr. Finkel would have to show is that the house that is in question, the house that doesn't seem to be on the tax records with the carport was built before 1973. That's one of the time limits that you would have to show. The second would be you have to show, as far as setbacks are concerned, that the property was actually in existence for more than three years before the cease and desist story, which you've said already. So one is the use, which is the major concern I think we have. The other is the, uh, the possible setback violation. How about the house you lived in? We haven't done any investigation onto that. We were, at this stage, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt that that was there before they were prohibited. Uh, that may come later, may not come later, I don't know. All right, right now, we're not questioning that whatsoever. The other thing I just wanted to emphasize is that without obtaining any permits, and according to what Joe has said, Mr. Finkel, they said he got something verbally from a former building inspector, nothing in writing, there's a statute saying, and I quoted you another statute on that last page, that no building permit, this is 8 3 parentheses F and the parentheses, no building permit or cer certificate of occupancy shall be issued for a building, use, or structure subject to the zoning regulations of the municipality without certification and writing by the official charge with the enforcement of such regulations, that's Joe, that such building, use, or structure is in conformity with such regulations or is a valid non conforming use. So the building inspector can't issue a building permit or a certificate of completion or occupancy certificate, certificate of occupancy without getting something in writing from the zoning enforcement officer. And that usually is a three-part series. You get one sign up from the building official, one from the zoning officer, <coughs> one from the public health code or inspector or whoever you know, is in charge of the public health. Uh, other than that, we go down the list of uh, as far as lacking speci specificity. And as Joe said, there you'll see there are five or six letters. He's had about, Mr. Finkley has had about a year now to comply. Uh, he's not unfamiliar with land use regulations. Certainly, he could come in and have asked for more information if he needed it. He was asked to come in many times and uh, did finally come in at least, at least once. But I think as far as it being vague, uh, that, that's not a, a valid claim. So I, I guess that's all that I would have for now and expect that there may be more information next month. Thank you. I just wanted to ask Joe to step up for a second because I just want to I wanted to clarify using here we have the 2012 the map that says 2012 right on it mm -hmm. in front of them Joe using those assessors records if you grab the assessors records that you that you submitted that's the 2013 which we're going to find out more about but for the moment I just want to make sure we we're all talking about the same thing or we're on the same page. Okay. Now the assessor's records that you submitted, okay, the first page is, has just general information. Okay. The second page is mostly blank. The third page says Building 1, Section 1, Building Photo, and it has a layout. Can you point to where on this map this building is? It looks like it's got like a... I'm sorry. So that is the building looking at the 2012 map to the right. Of the That's the one that this this one here, Joe. To the which, right, which has the, the tenants on the on upstairs. Right? Yes. Okay. So that building matches what's on the yeah. assessor's record, of 2013. Okay. This is okay. this. Okay. So now we go to the next page, which is building two, section one, which looks like a house with a garage. Which building is that? That is this building here. They have a boat behind it in the picture. It's the residence. Right. And yes. that's a, that was it's shown residence. as a residence with a garage. Yes. And it says it's built 1941, which was well before zoning mm -hmm. in Essex. There will be no action taken on that house. Okay. And, I, and I, just to go back, the other one which says built 1940, which is interesting. There will be no action on that. Building. Okay. Now, the next page, extra features. Oh, no, that's for that same building. Okay. Outbuildings, FGR1, garage, average, 392 square feet. Where is that garage on this map, this 2012 map? Here's where I start assuming things, and I believe it 
was that FRGAR that I showed you on the From survey. From the survey map. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there is no other building on this property in this 2012 map that it's matches this description as a garage. I believe you're correct. Okay. So so that's the nub. But that's the, the, the okay. So just we've identified which or which. Where is the garage? Well, he's saying we don't know. It's part of this. He is assuming that what was that this what is shown here now was uh, what is shown here in 2012 was a garage. The circle. The circle. Mm -hmm. But that's the only other building on the property. If you remember when I said Mr. Pinkle Bay said at a meeting it used to be a shed and he expanded it. Mm -hmm. If he was here, he may say that's the garage only it's bigger. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, we can't speculate what he's going to say, but I just want to make sure we were clear on which buildings were which. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I didn't have anything. Anyone else want to speak on this at this point? I, I move that the matter be continued. For the, for the record, what's, what we should note who's sitting on this application are the five regular members, but we should also note that two of the alternates are present and have participated and heard the evidence, so that if one of the regular members is not available, either or both of those alternates will be able to sit at the next meeting and, as if they, because they were here, and they heard all the evidence. Just for the record. Do I hear a second to continue? I second. In favor. In favor. We'll declare that that item closed for for now, and we'll continue our next meeting. Thank you.